Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to look into how we set up the transport layer to be using Steamworks instead. So this way you can, for example, be using the Steamworks Relay in case you integrate Steam into your game. Now this is a great follow-up as well to the video where we set up the whole lobby stuff. So where we essentially start from the lobby setup in here, which was this scene. If you remember that video, if you followed along. Now first things first, I'm going to open up Steam to make sure that that started. I'm also going to go back into the game scene because what we essentially want to do is we want to handle the connection starter a little differently. In this one, when we set up the connection starter just for the quick testing setup, we were actually using the Perl transport. But instead of using this because we're using Steam, I'd rather use the Steam transport instead. So let's go and look at how we set that up first. Now on the network manager, let's add the Steam transport. I'm gonna just put that up here above the per transport. Now we can actually completely remove the per transport. And let, again, we can really use whatever transport that we want here. But going into the connection starter here, you can see we have the UDP and the per transport. I'm gonna change this to now be the Steam transport instead. And I'm gonna also change the name to be Steam transport. So I'm gonna get that. Be able to get the name of Steam transport. Whoops, Steam transport, like so. And this is of course gonna be UDP transport. I think I missed that last time around. Now that should work. Then here we can also check if we don't have steam transport, then it'll just call the error. And then again, that will be of type steam transport. And here we can set the network manager transport. So if we're starting from lobby, we want to set the network manager transport to steam transport. Again, if you don't have this bit of code, I would definitely go watch the lobby video. You don't have to necessarily set up the whole same lobby system. You can absolutely set up your own. You can use steam heathens and so, so on and so forth but the connection data should really be pretty much the same idea. The lobby data holder might not be the same thing, you might have something else to hold data, but again, it should pretty much translate. So here, where we're setting the lobby ID, this is no longer what we want to do. Now we want to get the ID. So the way that you connect peer-to-peer, -peer, and let's just go have a look at the Steam Transport, you can see this is peer-to-peer, -peer, and essentially the address which you have to feed it, it's the C Steam ID of the owner of the lobby in our case. So I'm pretty sure we can do matchmaking, which is Steam matchmaking, sorry, which is a part of the Steamworks uh, namespace. We can do Steam matchmaking, and then I think we can do get lobby owner. Okay, so first, in order to actually get the lobby ID to a C Steam ID, uh, we would need to pass it to a ULong in order to then pass it into or create it into a C Steam ID. Now, the way that we can do this is if we can do ulong.trypass, and essentially we can try and pass our value here, which is our string, into the ulong ID. So this will be the uh, long ID. Let's just write it like that. And now we're going, what we can essentially do is if this does not succeed, then we want to return and we can also just call some kind of error. Fail to pass lobby ID into ulong like that. And we can feed it this as a reference. Now we have the ulong ID, which we can then feed in here. And this, uh, oh, sorry. And then now, of course, we need to make this into a new system ID like so. So there we go. So this should get us the owner of a lobby. So we can do it like this. So we can take this. We can essentially save our lobby owner equals to this. Now we can also quickly do, uh, I think you can do um, if lobby owner dot is valid. So we can check if it is not valid. Then we essentially also just want to safeguard it. So we can do debug.log error fail to get lobby owner from past lobby id like that i can just feed it this here we go and now we can go into the steam transport dot address and we want to set the address equals to this time around to the lobby owner i think we can just to string this and i think this should work so let's now test this i hope this makes sense just to go over it again really quickly what the code we already had before checked that we essentially had lobby data and that we came in here with lobby data. And now what we're doing is we're gonna pass the string back to a ulong, which is what's required to work with the system ID. We then make the system ID from that ulong, and then we try and get the owner of the lobby's system ID, and then we try and connect to that system ID with the address. So let's go and try and test this directly from the lobby scene. Uh, let me also just quickly feed it. The steam transport shouldn't really matter. Um, but just for good measure, I like always having something in there. Now let's try and enter the lobby scene, like so. Hit create, I hit create lobby, I hit ready up. And let's see here, and there we go. It looks like we successfully connected going on to the network manager. It looks like we do indeed have an address in here. Now let's go and check if this work networked. So I'm gonna try and push it to Git so that my other computer can also get it and we can test it over there as well. 
There we go. I'm gonna try and create a lobby. And there we go. Now Kongidong joined the lobby. I'm gonna ready up both and let's have a look and see if this works. And there we go. It looks like we're connected. And looking at this, so let's go and have a look in the network manager in here. We should now be able to see that we are connected using the Steam transport as you can see here. This is successfully connected with an address and if I go and I look at the same, here on my other computer, I can see that I am indeed connected to the exact same address. So there we go. now we're essentially connected through the Steam Relay and everything seems to be working really well. And we can shoot, we can kill them and everything should just work. They die, we, they would respawn and we're essentially back in the same loop again. Awesome, that was pretty easy to do. I hope that you were able to follow along and that it didn't get too advanced. It really isn't a lot of code changes, but working with Steamworks.net directly can always be a bit tricky, which is why I very often recommend using something like Heathen Steamworks. I really enjoy working with them. They essentially handle a lot of this stuff for you, making it a lot easier here to work with these kind of data structures awesome well i really hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was helpful to you and that you learned something new and you're able to apply this to your project please do remember to leave a like comment and subscribe and i just hope that you have a wonderful day